There's the 9x19 or 9mm. I've advocated that in a lot of different guns here in the Nut and Fancy project. I think it's very size, weight, and cost efficient. And I think if given the proper loading, i.e. expanding bullet, that it will get the job done. If you can get your job done, and that is connecting with the target. I don't think it's underpowered by any means as long as you do your part. It all comes down to shot placement anyhow when you're talking about a handgun cartridge, truth be told. There's no magical handgun cartridge that is going to connect in you know, any part of the body and end the fight. It just doesn't happen that way. If you connect with the CNS or the central nervous system with a 9x19, proper loading, it'll get the job done. So yeah, I advocate that in a lot of different guns, but that doesn't mean I am myopic in my loads. And I pretty much advocate and keeping an open mind in the Nut and Fancy project. The 40 Smith is an excellent cartridge. A lot of duty cartridge, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's a duty cartridge for many a law enforcement officer to include myself. And I think it has a very good track record and there's a reason why most police agencies use that loading. Because it works. It's a good blend between 9mm and the venerable 45 Auto. 357 SIG, getting a lot of great reports from that one. Departments love it. It has a lot of energy when it connects to the bad guy. It has stopped many of fights. About the only complaint I'm hearing about it is it's so expensive to shoot that a lot of departments can't afford to train on it that often. It's not a military round, so they can't buy military brass for it or remanufacture an ammunition that increases their training frequency. So downside to that. That brings us to, well, it's 10mm. That's a great cartridge. I think a little bit too much blast, size, and recoil for a personal handgun designed for defense. I do think, however, it's an excellent bear cartridge for emergencies. If I'm going into bear country, I think a Glock loaded with 10mm's would be the ticket. Lightweight, wouldn't weigh you down. Yeah, have that strapped to your hip when you're on the, the trout stream up there in Alaska. I would feel a lot better about it. 45 Auto. And that's kind of where we're going with this. Huge fans of the 45. They love it. Launches a big old projectile out there. Yeah, slower velocity, but it's a good fight stopper, proven as such. Even in a full metal jacket loading, the 45 Auto is an effective man stopper. Uh, good cartridge. And some guys just want to carry the biggest, baddest bullet they can. For a lot of people, it's the 45 Auto. And that's why I'm doing this review. Hello, nothing fancy here with another Glock review. This one is actually going to be in the subcompact category. I've talked about that Glock 26. The 27 is pretty much identical, just a different chambering, the 40 Smith. And that's going to bring us on down to this gun, the Glock 30 subcompact 45 ACP. And here it is on the review table. And yes, this is a preliminary tabletop by me, nothing fancy. So I may miss a few things, but I generally I'll cover the details that most users are interested in before they go out and spend their hard-earned money. When I'm talking about my users, by the way, I'm talking about you civilian sheepdogs and also you police officers, federal or local, whoever, that are going to spend their money on buying a duty gun or maybe a primary, getting to philosophy of use, concealed carry weapon. Glock 30 would be a good choice. But let me, oh, I'm kind of jumping ahead. Good concealed carry weapon, and also it is a good overall home defense option. You know, a lot of guys will email me and say, you know, what pistol should I buy? What is the best overall pistol? I can only buy one. That's all I have money for. What should it be? Well, something you need to consider, and I have written them back, is if you ever intend on carrying a gun concealed, you might want to go with smaller rather than larger especially when you're talking about Glocks. Because these Glocks shoot pretty much just as good as their full-size counterparts. They're soft shooting, depending on the caliber, and they're very accurate and reliable, even the subcompact ones like this Glock 30. Therefore, you really don't lose anything by going with a subcompact version. This gun could comfortably ride in your pistol safe next to your bed, ready for the entry of heaven forbid, bad guys in the middle of the night or some other time, and it will serve the purpose. Also, if you hit the road someday and say, you know what, I need a gun that's somewhat portable, your Glock 30 will probably fill that role as well. One gun, 
multi roles. However, here comes a caveat. It is a 45 ACP platform. You've said to yourself, hey, I'm only comfortable with 45s. That's what I want. I want to be launching those at the bad guys. I'm not comfortable with the puny 9mm or whatnot. Well, that's fine, but just know that when you make that decision, you're going to get a bigger gun. There's no way around it. The Glock 30 is wider and bigger than the Glock 26 and the 27. And that's just the way it is. It has to be that way because it's a bigger round. If we compare it against another brand, let's say just because it's handy, the kel PF9, you can see indeed there is a big thickness difference in the guns. Of course, this is a 9mm, this is a 45 ACP. But this gets again to the size and weight efficiency of the 9mm cartridge, which I advocate a lot, and here's why. You can see that. It's very comfortable. I don't know if I would advocate you carrying a Glock 30 on your ankle. It's too big. It's too thick. Um, you're just going to be bumping into it all the time. Um, waistband, probably the same issue. Horizontal shoulder carry, I think it would be fine. Also inside the waistband with a proper holster, maybe along the lines of the Galco Summer Comfort holster, which I've reviewed here at TMP, good choice. I think it could work if you size your pants and your belt accordingly. Just know you're carrying a 1.27 inch dimension this way, and there's really no way to change that. You want a 45 ACP, that's kind of what goes along with the package. So that's the size, and the size pretty much. It's a chunky package to carry. Uh, but you know what? Truth be told, so is the Glock 26 and 27. I don't think they're ultra slim either. You know, and they are carryable in the dimensions of overall height and length. They do quite well, and I'm flipping through the catalog to find exactly how thick that is. The Glock 27 is 1.18 inches in width. This is 1.27. A lot of guys will say, that's not a big difference. Trust me. Every micro inch counts when we're talking about the dimension of width when it comes to concealed carry. It drives right to the heart of comfort. And this is steel. Steel does not give. <laughs> You're carrying a brick, basically, and it's, the thinner you can make that, take it from me, having carried weapons for a long time, concealed, you know, you'll be doing yourself a favor. And you'll find yourself wearing it. More importantly, driving to obligation of carry video, like I've talked to you guys about. So, the weight, by the way, is decent. What is it, 25 ounces overall weight, or 26 with this Glock 30? And that's decent. I like it. Um, for a 45 ACP that's carrying 10 plus 1 rounds, that's outstanding. Uh, for me, at least. Compare that against a full-size 1911, which has 8 plus 1 rounds, which weighs 38 ounces. Much lighter. And yes, I know there's some subcompact and very lightweight alloy-framed 1911s out there. But guess what? They're only going to be carrying about 6 rounds, if that, 6 plus 1. So the Glock 30 is definitely going to blow them away in terms of firepower. And another cool thing about all of the Glock pistols, as I mentioned in my multi-part Glock 17 series, which still remains my reference standard for 9mm pistols, is that if you have a subcompact Glock, like the Glock 30, it will take the magazines of its larger brother, in this case the Glock 21. How cool is that? So you have just upped your firepower from 10 rounds to 13 rounds. 13 plus 1 to be exact, of not just 9mm, not just 40, but 45 ACP. Therefore, as a concealed carry permit holder, you could have this basic 10 round magazine in your Glock loaded up, and then I wish I had my mag here, I just put it away. The Glock 21 magazine, 13 rounder, ready as your spare magazine. Decent, huh? Now you have 24 rounds available of 45 ACP. That's excellent firepower for a 45. And especially at the weight, it's not going to break the bank. The accuracy on the Glock is just like all Glocks. It's excellent. Excellent. Expect 3 inch, three inch groups at 25 yards. Yes, even with a subcompact Glock. Proven by me, nothing fancy. I've shown you targets before. These subcompact Glocks, guys, shoot just as good, in my experience. There might be a bad limit out there, but in my experience, they shoot just as good, just as accurately and reliably 
as their larger counterparts in the Glock line. Extremely good accuracy, probably even better than three inches. At seven to 15 yards, um, and I would say seven in, which is a very realistic engagement distance for close combat, extremely accurate. One hole easily. <clears throat> They're just outstanding. And I've spoken to this in other Glock models. Ergonomics, no surprises here, it's a Glock. And Glock ergonomics, you know, Gaston Glock just got it right. Let's start off with simplicity. There's no exterior controls there that don't have to be there. There's no safety mechanisms, no hammer drop, nothing. All you got is a slide release. There's your takedown lever right there. Simple, simple, simple. I love simple. Simple's easy, you know, and it has a safe action trigger in it. It's been previously safety checked. Do it one more time. Safe action trigger, no surprises. Kind of a preloaded striker design. I don't mind the Glock trigger. Did I have to get used to it years ago? Yep, totally did. First, I wasn't a huge fan. After putting, you know, several hundred rounds through it, I started to warm up through it, a warm up to it, and then I was like, you know what, safe action trigger, I can deal with it. Shoot accurately and fast with it. You see me do so on video. Good trigger. And I don't mind it at all. Simple controls, good trigger. The sights, no surprises. It's a tritium sight set up on this particular one as it comes from the factory. And I don't mind the green on green sight picture. I don't. You know, some guys say, well, I like a red front diet, red front dot or yellow front dot. Green on green's fine for me now. And I like the Glock factory tritium sights. They work fine. The overall feel, getting to the end of this talking point, like I said, though, however, is chunky, a little bit thick. By the way, this is a Glock 30 SF, which stands for slim frame. I would highly recommend, guys, that you buy this slim frame version versus a regular Glock, uh, Glock 30. That's because it's going to have a reduced circumference grip. And I think just about everybody will like that better than the even chunkier regular Glock 30. Call me crazy. Now again, my hands tend to be towards the large size. But even for my large size hands, I just compared them and I don't have it here, but a Glock 30 versus the SF, I like the SF better. So if you're contemplating one or the other, hmm, first off, I'd recommend you hold them because your mileage may vary. You may find the other one fits you better, but I like pretty much all the SF versions better if they're offered. Um, that's just me. So the controls are excellent. One thing I forgot to mention is it has that squared off trigger guard. I always like that. I'm so glad Glock has not gotten rid of that despite all the hype. So that's a good thing. And... Speaking of ergonomics, it actually has a rail on it too, so you can put a light on it, a subcompact light, which is pretty amazing, honestly, for a subcompact type pistol. Most subcompacts don't even have room for a rail. Since it's a 45 and kind of has some bigger dimensions, they have it. Field strip and maintenance, it's so easy, I'll go ahead and do it. Again, some guys will complain, I hate having to pull the trigger of a Glock to field strip it. I've never thought of that as being an issue. Just practice good, safe gun handling. Take the magazine out, rack it several times, do a visual and feel check in there to make sure indeed it's empty. Point it in a safe direction. Go ahead and pull the trigger and then field strip it. Nothing field strips as quite as easily as a Glock. And here I am screwing this up, except maybe a SIG. A SIG does, it's pretty easy. That's it. There's a field strip. Simple Simon, simple Simon. I like simple. I don't like complicated. If given a choice, I'd much rather not have complicated. And I can't get this back together. Hang on. There, I got it back in. Heck, that double captive recoil spring, that's pretty stout. I'm used to the 9mm one, which I can compress easily. This one takes a little bit more effort, so I had to jam that into the indent properly. Anyways, back on, there's your slide rails, the metal ones up front and in the back on the Glock. It's hard for me to line everything up looking through the viewfinder. Wish me luck. Function check, double check. That's it. That's the field strip and the maintenance as is as previously described with my other vids. Excellent. The Glock really sets a standard for field strip in a lot of different ways and the simplicity. Very few parts in all Glock pistols. This takes us to accessories and versatility. I'll start off with accessories. First off, there's a lot of factories accessories you can do. 
you, know, you might want to put in a different connector to lighten the trigger pull up. I kind of like that. You might want to put in a heavier one, heavier trigger. Different side options. The Maritime Spring Cups are only for the 9mm version, so sorry. You know, it has different holsters available somewhere along through here. There they are from the factory. And that's not even getting into the aftermarket stuff for all Glocks. You have different trigger, barrel options, side options, grip options, magazine options. And yes, even the Glock 30 would benefit from this. Widely available accessories. And why is that? It's because Glock has sold so many of these guns. You know, they're everywhere. And when a gun sells and becomes so successful like the Glock, you're going to have a big accessories market for it. That is a huge advantage of choosing a proven design, guys, that you will like the accessories that you'll find for it. If there's something you do not like about your gun, it's an easy enough proposition to change it. For me, and you'll see this in a separate Glock modica modification video, I kind of do like this three and a half pound connectors, lightening the trigger pull up. I like an extended slide release. Yes, I know that most guys advocate pulling the whole slide back. However, I like the slide release option on my thumb, which is pretty much always there, ready for that. Maybe an extended magazine release. I like that. And maybe some decal grips on the side. All of them are pretty inexpensive and useful modifications to the Glock design. And yeah, you can do them on the 30 as well. So superb. Versatility. I talked to that a little bit already, didn't I? It can be a home defense gun, can be a CCW gun, lots of functionality in the Glock 30 design. Value is excellent, just like all Glocks. When you spend your money on a Glock, you're going to get one of the world's most proven semi-automatic pistol designs. Yes, I know there's others, the Beretta M9, the 1911 Colt, the SIGs, they're all excellent. But Glock has such a proven track record and a reputation for durability and reliability, I think the Glock 30 will take advantage of that and be right in line with that for the most part. Some guys will say, well, it's a 45. It's not really the caliber that Gaston Glock designed for the original Glock. You might be somewhat less reliable than a 9mm version. Um, overall, in the big scheme of things, they might have a point. But I think how many stoppages would you have of... Uh, it would probably be so minuscule that it's not even worth considering, if you ask me. Uh, from my experience and what I know, and again, I'm not the end-all expert. These are just nothing fancy data points I'm giving you. But these Glocks, in all calibers, are extremely, extremely reliable, durable, and accurate. And I don't think the Glock 30 would be any less so. Just know, though, again, this is another caveat with a 45 chambering. If you decide to go 45, which is fine... Just know it's going to recoil more. You know, it's going to have a little bit more oomph when you launch that bigger chunk of lead as Newton's laws come into play, like I said. So if you're good with that and you can train with it and you just are sold on the bigger metal chunk you're launching with a 45, then go for it. So overall, excellent track record, and that is the Glock 30. I think it's a great choice, especially in the SF frame design, slim frame, that's going to fit a lot of people a little bit better. If you can deal with that wider slide width, 1.27 inches, and the overall chunkiness of the design, and come up with a way to carry it comfortably and with high percentage, I think you're going to be really pleased with the Glock 30. And it should rank very high on your list as a primary defensive gun for you civilian types. I think it might be a little bit on the big side as a backup gun for you LE types. There's nothing fancy. That's a review. I think I covered most of it. Clock 30, highly recommended. Thanks for the good ratings, the support, and the enthusiasm in the project. It keeps me going, keeps me working hard for you.